So we've seen that there's this wonderful theory in particle physics called supersymmetry, or SUSY, and it predicts a whole new family of particles with particular properties, and it explains lots of cool stuff about the uh, nature of reality, and it can predict a dark matter particle. But is it true? Well, on the basis of mathematics and helping explain things, it sounds pretty good, but you know, we're experimental scientists, see, we'd kind of like some actual data. Can you actually see these things? And testing this theory, supersymmetry, was one of the main purposes of the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, the world's biggest particle accelerator. So the Large Hadron Collider is a circular tunnel, 26 kilometers around, under the Swiss-French border near Geneva, and packets of protons are accelerated around here very, very close to the speed of light and crash into each other. They've got big magnets to make sure they turn in a circle rather than flying out, superconducting magnets. It's an incredibly expensive piece of technology and very fancy. Each packet of protons contains about 10 to the 11 protons and 50 million times a second, two of these packets crash head on with enormous energy in the middle of the detectors. The detectors are huge. There are two general purpose detectors uh, and here's one of them. Uh, you may just about be able to pick out a person down the bottom there. What these are is a whole, uh, you smash the particles in the middle and the particles fly out and they fly out to chamber after chamber of detectors of various sorts. So the basic idea is when the particles smash together they will produce particles like Higgs boson and possibly like the supersymmetric particles. These particles will fly out. They won't last very long, they'll disappear very rapidly, but they will break up into other particles which in turn break up into yet more particles until they end up with particles we kind of know and love like photons and electrons and neutrons and muons and things like that and these will fly out through the detector and by measuring the energies and directions of all these things we can work out backwards what actually has happened. So this might be the sort of trace, it's an explosion in the middle, it fires a whole bunch of particles out and they hit different detectors at different radii and from looking at the energies from all these things you can extrapolate back and work out what must have been created there in the first place. Now this is an absolutely formidable challenge because every event, every collision generates about 25 megabytes of data because you've got all these thousands of detectors each of which is sending signals back. Yes, we picked up a blip here, a bit of a voltage over there, whatever it might be. But there are 50 million of these events per second, so that means you get about a petabyte of data a second, and current computers can't come anywhere close to handling that. So what we need is some sort of triggering system. Most of these collisions are very boring things, so there's a whole bunch of both hardware and software that looks very quickly at the data coming in and said, oh, boring, ignore, boring, ignore. And there are only a small number which are more interesting, and these more interesting ones, about a thousand a second, that's still quite a lot, but that's a number we can possibly process. And so they are stored on disk, and then you analyze them, and you get diagrams like this one again, and from it you can try and reconstruct what actually went on. And the result is, well, no supersymmetric particles. Sorry, none. They did not show up. And they were able to test the entire mass range that would allow these supersymmetric particles to explain the low mass of the Higgs boson. Because basically the supersymmetric particles would need to have, at least one of them or two of them, would need to have about the same mass as the Higgs boson, which is 125 giga electron volts. And they searched that range very thoroughly, they found the Higgs boson, but they did not find any other particles with the right properties. So supersymmetry could still be true, but it cannot explain the low mass of the Higgs boson, and hence the low mass of all the other particles, which is actually the reason it was invented in the first place. So that's a bit of a bummer. Theory could still exist, but it can't explain what it was invented for. Okay, so is supersymmetry dead? Well, it's certainly bleeding on the floor, not looking too healthy. You can maybe change it, but it can no longer do what you want it to do without a lot of theoretical wiggling. Though, mind you, theoretical physicists are very good at that sort of wiggling. What about dark matter? Well, this doesn't rule out wimp dark matter. And in fact, this, uh, these wimp dark matter particles don't necessarily have to come from supersymmetry at all. Any particle which has about this interaction rate and this mass would do the trick and would have the same wimp miracle and explain how much there was. It doesn't even have to interact via the weak interaction. Any, it could be some new force of nature we've never discovered before which has the right cross section. So supersymmetry dying does not necessarily kill these. So can we actually see 
does WIMP dark matter exist directly? Remember, these particles are in principle flying through our bodies as we stand here. And there have been a whole series of experiments. And just within the last few years, they've started reaching really interesting sensitivity levels when they can start ruling in or ruling out dark matter detection. The current most sensitive is the Xenon 1T. It's actually three and a half tons at the moment of ultra pure liquid xenon. It's located at 1.4 kilometers underground in the Gran Sasso uh, laboratory in Italy. Uh, basically, there's a, a motorway tunnel going uh, under the mountain range, and they dug off some caves to the side to put their detectors. This stops cosmic rays from coming in and polluting them. Here's what it looks like. Once again, it's an enormous thing. You can maybe just about see some people down at the bottom. But what's inside it is this tank of ultra pure liquid xenon. Now, when you buy xenon, as one does, it's not pure enough. It turns out there's a small amount of isotope of krypton in there, actually left over from nuclear tests that are done by various atomic powers around the world. And that's between one part and ten to the six and one part and ten to the nine. And the decays of that give you far too high a background. So you have to you filter most of that out by repeated distillation, but if you do that, you can get ultra, ultra pure liquid xenon. And when a dark matter particle goes through, zip, very occasionally it will interact with one of the xenon atoms. The xenon atom will recoil from being hit by this WIMP particle, and that will produce a brief flash of light, which is picked up by a bunch of photomultiplier tubes on the top and the bottom but it will also produce a free electron, and this electron will be accelerated up until it reaches the top where the liquid xenon meets gas xenon, and then the voltage there will accelerate upwards and produce another flash. So what you should get is if a dark matter particle comes through is two flashes with a very particular time between them and a very particular ratio of brightness. And this setup is used to eliminate things that don't fit, um, any of the huge number of background particles that are in there. So it's actually very clean. It gets rid of almost all the background particles and can spot just the WIMP interactions. And the result is no detections. And this experiment and some other ones are now so sensitive that if there had been a WIMP with the right mass range and the right cross-section to explain the WIMP miracle, it pretty much would have been seen. Maybe not quite 100%, but certainly 90-95% certainty. So it looks like WIMPs, which you, three or four years ago were probably the leading contender for dark matter, it looks like they're not dark matter after all, or at least they're bleeding on the floor as a theory. Which is a shame, because they were a really nice theory, they explained a lot of particle physics, they weren't just something made up arbitrarily. Um, and as for the next few years, new experiments are going to drive many more nails into the coffin of this theory. So does this mean dark matter can't be some sort of strange particle? Well, no, particle physicists are way too imaginative for that. Here are some of the uh, current theories from a talk by uh, particle physicist Tim Tate. There are a huge number of particle physics theories. Probably the leading contender now are axions. I can give a whole other talk about that, but I won't. Um, so it's going to be very hard to rule everything out. As soon as you rule out one possibility, people invent another one. The worst case scenario would be that these particles actually don't interact at all except via gravity, in which case no experiment is ever going to find them. So, looks like WIMPs are dead, but uh, there's several more possibilities.